and then afterwards. Yeah. Okay, I have the. I was on. <laughs> uh, moved by Councillor Kiefer, seconded by Councillor Foxton. Do we have any declarations of pecuniary interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? Seeing none, um, we're going to move on to what I know you've been waiting for since you saw this group walk in with their very intriguing basket. Um, I'm happy to introduce a group from Knox United, uh, Gail and uh, her cohort um, talking about bread, not stones. Let's see if she'll sit up there for us. Maybe I'll have to hold her. <laughs> thank you very much, Chair Redman, uh, Elizabeth Clark, and regional councillors. We thank you for inviting us here today. My name is Gail Fricker, and I am the Minister of Knox United in Air, and I'm joined by two members of our Church and Action team, Tiffany Jewell and Shannon LeMay. The reason why we have come to talk to you today is part of the United Church initiative called Bread Not Stones campaign. This campaign looks at how do we deal with and handle child poverty. It's called Bread Not Stones because it's based on the scripture from Matthew 7 verse 9 that says, if a child asks for bread, who among you would give that child a stone? This campaign is not asking for funds. This is raising awareness campaign, raising awareness in child poverty here in Ontario. I have a, a video that I'd like you to watch that I think explains the campaign very well, and then I'll chat a bit more afterwards. A promise that was made here once for bread, not stone. A promise. To end the plight of children suffering alone With their empty hands and hungry hearts In Canada, over 1,300,000 children live in poverty 60% of First Nations children on reserves live in poverty. All this is a national disgrace. The United Church of Canada began the project Bread Not Stones, named for what Jesus says in Matthew 7, verse 9. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, We'll give a stone. <laughs> it's wonderful. The the rag doll is a symbol of hope. So how does she want us to throw that on? The whole point of it is to bring to attention uh, that there is something needs to be done uh, to bring children out of poverty. You and I alone can't raise billions of dollars to end child poverty. But our governments can, and we want to convince them to do it. We'll be able to give the rag dolls to people who can make a difference in child poverty in Canada. They're presented as silent voices and reminders to national, That's provincial, municipal, and First Nations politicians and others with power to make change. A good way of working together to try to bring about change in our country. It has to happen. Let's make the future Let's keep a promise. 
Thank you for watching that. It was a prom. Maybe twice. <laughs> Um, in 2014, Statistics Canada said that 18% of Ontario children were living in poverty. In 2016, the census shows that 17% of children under the age of six here in Waterloo Region are living below the poverty line. <coughs> so what does child poverty look like here in Waterloo Region? We've handed out some dolls for you right there. You'll get these ones eventually. But the paper dolls all have sayings on. I'm going to ask you, starting from here, that we go around and you read out loud, what does child poverty look like here in Waterloo Region? I have nothing to play with outside. I don't have access to the internet. I'm not able to participate in school trips that cost money. I don't have a quiet place to do my homework. I never get new clothes. If I get my shoes wet, I don't have a second pair. We don't have a car, so I have to walk everywhere. I'm a newly arrived refugee. My parents don't have jobs yet. I don't have any books to read. I don't get to celebrate special occasions like my birthday. I don't eat protein every meal. I don't get warm gloves for winter. I don't eat three meals a day. I can't invite friends over to my house to play. I don't eat fresh fruit or vegetables every day. Take a moment to reflect if any of these statements apply to any of you here. Most of us, no doubt, live in comfortable accommodation. We have food on the table, in the fridge, in the cupboard. We probably drive a car and have another one in the laneway, and we no doubt shop for clothes. But we believe that's not the case for many children. And we believe that you can make a difference about that. We believe that you do have the power to make changes here at a local government level. I understand that Waterloo Region has applied for a grant called Smart Cities that is specifically aimed to deal with child poverty, and I congratulate you on that. But regardless of the outcome of that grant, I ask you to think carefully about how will you as councillors make a difference? Will you support affordable housing initiatives? Will you support food banks? Will you implement food programs in schools and in daycares? Will you provide affordable childcare, support and implement affordable youth activities, and support affordable public transports? As you are thinking about that and moving forward to the future, we'd like to give each of you out a doll. This doll is a visual reminder of this presentation, a visual reminder of your commitment the dolls are made by people from our United Church in Knox, at Knox United in Air. And uh, the only thing we ask of you is with your dolls, in a moment that you take a photograph with us as a reminder of this presentation. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? Uh, I do have a question for you. Thanks, Gil. Uh, Councillor Foxton. Not a question, just a situation. So. As you know, if you read the stats at uh, council here, you'll find that um, North Dumfries has one of the highest costs of housing. So um, we don't see a lot of poverty. So one day this little girl, and I mean she's little, she was five years old, she wasn't as tall as I am. <laughs> but really short, yeah. She comes home from school one day and she goes through her closet and she's taken out boots and she's taken out mitts and her mom says, what are you doing? And she goes, there's this little girl that comes to school every day, mom, and she has a pair of shoes and they're ripped and it's snowing and it's wet and it's cold out. She doesn't have a coat and uh, she doesn't have any mitts and she brings a baked potato to school every day to eat for lunch because that's all they've got. So of course her mom loaded her up and took her back to school and the community pitched in and helped out the family and that. But it's that unawareness that bothers me the most. Mm -hmm. That none of us were aware that they become invisible. And that one child, the school never did anything. Nobody else, one five-year-old child saw this through the eyes of a child, eh? 
Absolutely. So, um, and Smart City Challenge, we're going to feed the minds and the bodies of these children and, and help. And I'm so proud of what this regional council is moving forward with. And we do uh, participate in, and help in affordable housing and, and help in child care and everything else. We know it's not enough. We know we're still striving to do more. But we applaud that as, as community, we can all do so much better. Thank you, Councillor Foxton. Oh, uh, Chair Redmond. Thank you, Chair Clark. I just really want to thank you, Gail, for coming in. Um, I'm on the Board of Governors of Martin Luther uh, University College, and they have a whole series of conversations about how the faith community can animate the political um, decision makers, and this is a wonderful example of a convergent of needs that, that we all share. So thank you very much for raising awareness. Thank you very much. Conversations are where we start. But there's no further questions, if I could... Well, I, I was actually just going to ask, are you able to share your presentation with us? You had some... The, the video? Uh, well, the video uh, would be wonderful, but uh, your notes... The notes I have here? Absolutely, yeah. I can that do would be that. Great. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. If, I, if I have time, uh, Chair Clark, if we could ask the councillors to come into the middle for a quick photograph, we would appreciate that. that. Bring your dolls. Oh. With your dolls. Okay. We're just going to do a motion uh, first to, to go into closed session. And I, Sue Foxton, oh, sorry, Councillor Foxton and, and Councillor Jaworski, and then a motion to adjourn. Everybody all at once. <laughs> Just pick somebody randomly. <laughs> okay, we're good. Pictures. We're going to reconvene Community Services Committee. Uh, having heard our delegation, we'll move into reports uh, from Public Health and Emergency Services, and we have a presentation on the Board of Health orientation. Good afternoon, Ch Chair Clark and members of the Community Services Committee. This presentation provides a high-level summary of the report titled Board of Health Orientation.
Under the Health Protection and Promotion Act, Region of Waterloo Council serves as the Board of Health for Waterloo Region. Prior to 1975, the Waterloo Regional Board of Health and the Waterloo Regional Health Unit existed as a standalone board. Public Health has compiled a number of resources to assist <coughs> Council with orientation to their role and responsibilities as members of the Board of Health. All resources can be found in hard copy format in the Councillor's Library and electronically through links within the report. <coughs> Public health programs and services are delivered in Ontario communities by 35 local health units. Public health focuses on population health or protecting and improving the health and well-being of people in local communities and across the country. We use strategies to promote and protect health and prevent disease and injury in the population. Our services can reduce the need for other health care services and have the potential to limit the consequences of poor health by addressing the determinants of health and reducing risks to the population. Practitioners in public health work collaboratively with other partners and sectors. <coughs> The Health Protection and Promotion Act is the most important piece of legislation for, board of, for boards of health, as it prescribes the existence, structures, governance, and functions of boards of health, as well as the activities and responsibilities of medical officers of health and certain public health functions of the Minister of Health. It is also the enabling statute for regulations and guidelines that prescribe the more detailed requirements that serve the purpose of the Act which is to provide for the organization and delivery of public health programs and services, prevention of the spread of disease, and the promotion and protection of the health of the people of Ontario. The Health Protection and Promotion Act includes 19 regulations that govern Board of Health composition, qualifications of staff, food <coughs> safety, school health, and communicable disease control. The Health Protection and Promotion Act provides for the publication of the Ontario Public Health Standards, requirements for programs, services, and accountability, which identify the minimum expectations of public health programs and services to be delivered by Ontario's 35 health units. Boards of health are accountable for implementing the standards, including protocols and guidelines that are referenced. The requirements outline information that supports effective orientation for Board of Health members and to help them remain abreast of relevant trends and emerging public health issues. In addition, there is a requirement for Boards of Health to have a self-evaluation process of governance practices that is completed at least every other year. Within the standards, there are protocols which provide direction on how Boards of Health shall operationalize specific requirements. The aim is to have consistent implementation of requirements across the 35 health units. In addition to protocols, the guidelines provide direction on how boards of health shall approach specific requirements identified within the standards. These address variability in programs and services across health units based on local need and contextual factors as defined in the guidelines. The Health Protection and Promotion Act authorizes you as the Board of Health and staff to control communicable disease and other health hazards in the community. It also mandates the health unit to perform proactive functions in the areas of health promotion and disease prevention. All programs and services are approved by the Board of Health. The Board of Health is accountable for ensuring that public health needs are addressed by the appropriate programs and ensuring that the health unit is well managed. Mechanisms used at the Region of Waterloo to assist Council in meeting its obligations as the Board of Health include regular reporting through Community Services Committee, and it includes reporting of health data, program impacts, and any program modifications needed to improve the health of the population. The Medical Officer of Health reports to the Board of Health on matters related to upholding the Health Promotion and Protection Act. The Medical Officer of Health is responsible for the management of public health programs and services on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. The Medical Officer of Health ensures regular reporting to the Board of Health on programs and services and priority population health issues. 
A series of 10 fact sheets have been developed by Public Health to summarize key information the Council needs to know as Board of Health members. The fact sheets, which can be accessed electronically on the Public Health page of the Region Waterloo website, are intended to not only assist with orientation, but also act as a reference going forward. They have been developed as a result of feedback received from Board of Health self-evaluations conducted in 2012, 2015, and 2017. The Board of Health Self-Evaluation Survey is intended to gather counselors' perceptions of how effectively they are fulfilling their role as the Board of Health. The main purpose is to encourage dialogue, identify challenges and opportunities for improvement. The survey was last administered with the Board of Health in 2017, and the next Board of Health self-evaluation is scheduled for this fall. This wraps up the presentation. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions of staff? None are popping up. Thank you very much. Uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> we have a late questioner, Chair Redmond. Chair Clark, I apologize. It's just you had mentioned that we do the self-assessment every second year. Is next year the year we would do it again? I seem to recall doing um, filling that out last year. So the last self-evaluation took place in the fall of 2017. If we follow the two-year schedule, it would be taking place this fall, 2019. Thank you. I think that um, this, this presentation is very useful, not just because it prepares us for the self-evaluation so that we don't flunk it, but uh, I, I, when we do have our public health discussions and we'll have one coming up soon, I know that um, we have some talk around the table about what, what hat are we wearing, what's our role, and um, I know that there were, uh, Councillor Shantz asked quite a number of questions about the public health role, so I, I think that's uh, helpful for us to bear in mind. Thank you. Uh, the next item is an information item. It's the Food Safety Annual Report. Always a good read. No questions about that? No comments? Okay, we'll move on. Any information or correspondence? <coughs> Nothing in the package. Any council inquiries or requests for information that aren't on the tracking list? Councillor Jowett. Uh, so I noticed that we have a pending report for uh, needles and debris. And I was also wondering, I know that the costs of naloxone have been dispersed through different levels of government in the LIN and other vehicles. I was wondering if we have a cost of, uh, a cost of naloxone distribution through regional, through, a, through regional finance. Is that something staff can answer now? Um, the uh, cost is borne by the province, and um, we are a, a distributor of naloxone, like pharmacies and other agencies. Um, but I can look into um, obtaining, uh, you know, cost information uh, that we would be able to obtain. Um, if I could maybe have a, uh, a more of an idea of what you were hoping to. To, to have as, as, as information? Just go um, back to my bookkeeping days when you hear about overdoses and you hear about naloxone mm -hmm. uh, uses. It, it, it's just, just another way of doing a, another check back to say, oh, okay, so just a metrics to follow and, and, see, uh, and see where we're headed with it. I know we can't uh, account for the, the province and other distribution places. I, I'm just curious to see if it's an increasing target or okay. if that's at all possible. I'll look into that. Thank so, you for that. Dr. So will we get um, what what public health uh, distributes, or will we get yeah. what is distributed throughout the region? Oh, we can at least get what public health distributes, but we will look into see whether or not we can get additional information from the ministry. Thank you. Okay, any other business? Seeing none, our next meeting is on Tuesday, April 9th. And can I have a motion to adjourn? I see Councillor Foxton and Councillor Armstrong. All in favor? <laughs> Adjourned. That wasn't long.